still on Bottoms Road. Um, this is going to be a part two. I don't think, like I said, I want to keep these videos uh, just kind of raw footage. I don't want to do editing. It's you're, You get what you get. Uh, fast forward through bits if you want, you know, or, uh, or just kind of watch and keep it running in the background, whatever suits your viewing interest. But uh, I just had to sit down and kind of try and play with like how I wanted this to work. And so rather than going back up the hill, uh, let's see what it does. Okay. Well, I think it managed that situation well. Um, I decided I wanted to just kind of let it run on the road and see how it goes. Um, around here, things that we may have to contend with. Uh, I don't know if we'll need to in a situation like this, but uh, deer, pretty common. Um, or at least from my experience, I feel like I've I feel like I've come across deer down here quite a bit, uh, especially when I'm on my bikes. It seems like anytime I'm on my bike trying to go for a ride, I always find myself face to face with a buck or something that's uh, <laughs> hanging out on the the Katy Trail. So let's see. This might be a fairly simple trip. We'll find out. I'm I'm just letting the car. I just typed in my home address. Uh, figured I'd let the car find its best way back and let it do its thing. Um, so I'm not even sure. I'm hoping it kind of takes me up through Weldon Springs uh, for for anybody that's familiar with the area because I know that can get hilly, a little curvy at times. Uh, so it, it could just create some, some situations where uh, vision, I guess you could say, around certain curves might be a little limited, et cetera. Um, but we'll find out that, that part as we go. Uh, yeah, it's a nice quiet evening, by the way, uh, 71 degrees. We've had a good heat wave and 71 degrees feels brilliant outside. And Missouri, when the weather's nice like this, People flock to going outside and hanging out and doing fun things. That's one of the things I actually like about Missouri. I think, I think a lot of people, you know, it's a flyover state, et cetera. Um, but I think, I think people who have lived in this area, maybe if you're, maybe when you're younger, uh, you don't appreciate it as much because, you know, you want fun things to do, et cetera. And this, unless you like baseball, et cetera. But if you're looking to go to like clubs or, you know, kind of the city life type thing, I don't feel like, St. Louis really hits the mark there. Um, that being said, as an adult, and you're trying to raise a family, frankly, um, Missouri is a pretty affordable place to live. Uh, assuming that it, you know, the economy supports the, the kind of work you like to do, it really can be a very affordable place to live. And um, generally speaking, I would say super family friendly. There's Parks, at least in St. Charles, and this is the area I live in, right? Um, but even when I go into to St. Louis, there's lots of green spaces, lots of parks everywhere. And so if you're an outdoorsy kind of person, like you can really enjoy St. Louis and the surrounding areas. Um, you know, it, it'd be nice if we could get uh, football back to St. Louis. If you ask me, I am very much a, a football person, uh, more than I am a uh, a baseball person. So, um, yeah, again, this has been so far a very uneventful drive. Like this is, this is the kind of thing you want to do, right? Like I, I know that sounds silly, you know, I'm somebody making YouTube videos, but at the end of the day, um, like in a perfect world, there'd be nothing for me to do videos about. Like it would just be like you'd be sitting there going for a ride with me as if I was the one driving it. Uh, this is a nice tight turn. Let's see how we handle it. Drifted a little bit, but completely, completely what I would consider normal, like nothing, nothing extreme. Some of these homes around here in Walden Springs are absolutely beautiful, by the way. Um, I don't, uh, we're into the wrong lane.
it did self-correct itself, but again, into the wrong way. For some reason, it's just, it really has an issue with this version in particular, 12.3.6, really struggles with this kind of, like when the lane widens scenario and it has to choose between the straight lane and the turning lane. Yeah, see, there's that drop and accelerate. Like, we don't need to accelerate that fast. I mean, electric cars are torquey, but it doesn't need to accelerate that fast on roads like this. Um, well, yeah, that's that's probably the number one thing I would say that is uh, that is crept up on 12.4.3 versus 12.3.6 is just the lane issue. The 12.3.6 actually had a different issue, which is it was indecisive about which lane to be in. But it would generally figure it out pretty early and then get into the lane and stick to that lane. Um, the other thing that, that uh, 12.3.6 did a lot of was it would switch lanes a lot rather than just hanging out in one lane. So if you're on a four lane road or two lane road, it would just jump back and forth between lanes for like no apparent reason. Like there could be no cars in front of you. There could be no intersections approaching or anything. And it would just decide it was going to switch. And then less than half a mile later, switch back, you know, but again, that's, that's wasn't doing anything dangerous, you know, anything scary. It was just weird. Not, not how a normal person would drive. Um, this one, I would say the biggest flaw so far has really been the, the not being able to figure out this lane widening situation. And I, I really thought that they said, I, you know, again, take what Elon says with a grain of salt, but I really thought they said that on 12.4 and higher that they were going to deal with the acceleration off the line type issue, like making it more of a normal acceleration, how most people would drive their car. You know, you don't need to go from zero to whatever the speed limit is as fast as the car can get there. Um, if there's a car in front of you, it, it trails behind them at a nice normal pace. But if there's no car in front, it just takes off. So, all right, we're out of Weldon Springs. We're into St. Peter's. Uh, so far, so good. I mean, you know, minor little issues, but nothing that's really to write home about so far. Um, yeah, again, couldn't figure out the lane. Now, admittedly, nighttime and the lane is not well marked. It's kind of, uh, at this stage, like the, the lane markings are old. So we're back on to what is called Mid Rivers Mall. So you guys have seen, uh, You've seen this road from the other side. Usually I'm actually driving north to south on a lot of the videos that, that you've seen me on Mid Rivers Mall. So this time we're actually coming up from the river and we're heading north on Mid Rivers Mall and we're going to make a left onto Highway N, which is the road that I live off of. So, uh, so this is, okay, again, really stupid behavior. We're going to be making a left. There's, there's zero. This is what I was talking about with 12.3.6 just a second ago. Like here I was making it sound like they fixed it and it just did it again. Like no idea why we just had this random move where we went from one lane to another. Now we'll have to make the left here. Let's see which lane it picks. Okay. I'm fine with that. Uh, I did an earlier drive on FSD. I didn't have the camera rolling because I had the family with me and I don't know that they care to be on camera sometimes. So it was making the left from here and it cut the lane uh, with the car in the left lane, by the way. So that these left-hand turns, even when they're marked out where there's a lane marking like this, I mean, you can see it right here. If I'm in this right left-hand turn lane, I don't know why it won't stick to that lane line. It cuts it short, and it did it when there were people in there. Admittedly, the people on the inside lane will cut their path shorter, and so they end up they end up taking a shorter path. And so I almost feel like the Tesla kind of mirrors what they're doing, 
but the only problem is is you are like truly going into their lane uh and if they were to adjust back then you know you're the one at fault right you're the one cutting the lane so uh see how we handle the turn when you're on this on this side just like that it's straightforward i mean about the only thing that might be exciting here is my my son may still be at the gym and for those people who wanted to see the car park itself in the driveway if my son is at the gym you might finally get that opportunity so we'll find out here in you know two three minutes so fast forward a little bit if you don't want to see like driving through the neighborhood but nighttime driving um i don't really notice any uh degradation in fsd from my experience like the issues that you have during the day you have at night um even during the rain uh, somebody had asked the question about wanting to see it at rain when it was raining uh i'll take it out if if we get a rainstorm sometime in the near future um i'll take it out the only things that you'll notice is that it will we'll throw up a warning and make a lot of noise and give alerts warning you about potential degradation but by and large, I, I don't think I've seen any anything specific or unique that caused a problem uh, when it came to driving in the rain. The only thing I will say that I did not like about FSD driving in the rain is that when you're on a road like this one, most of the big puddles of water that pull up. So when we do get like heavy rains, sometimes you can get some serious puddling of water uh, just because it's not draining fast enough on these right lanes. And it'll go through those water puddles without slowing down. So just like right now we're doing 40 and a 35, it'll hit those water puddles at 40 miles an hour. And, you know, hydroplaning is a real issue. I mean, I'm not talking like little puddles of water. I'm talking like several, several inches thick puddles of water. So, all right. So oh, there we go. There's the issue of it doing the bad driving so nighttime issue maybe uh if you notice i had to intervene because it was going to run into the median it was actually probably going to go left of the median so at, at least we got that one on camera um you know instead of you guys actually hearing me say that it's an issue you get to see what i'm talking about that it was an issue and i had a car behind me which is why i intervened as quickly as i did with no cars coming or around i would have actually tried to play that out a little bit but I did not want to to deal with the issue of the car behind me, um, you know, potentially causing an issue there. So too bad that we had uh, a car behind us. Because otherwise, if it went down the wrong lane, since there were no cars coming, I might have let it do it just for the fact of proving that sometimes it just doesn't know what it's doing. So um, I think we, well, golf cart's moving out of the way, so... We get a lot of golf cart traffic in our neighborhood, so I was going to see how it interacted with the golf cart. My assumption is that it would treat it just like any other car um, and just kind of hang out. Would be interesting to see if it actually tried to pass the golf carts, which I would not want it to do unless the golf cart slowed or stopped. Because uh, they will, you know, a lot of times people are just trying to be courteous and so they'll kind of pull over to the side and wave you on. Uh, especially the older golf carts that only do like 13 miles an hour or something like that. But these, here's our funky stop. All the other stop signs that'll do well for this one, there's our hard stop. And then we'll creep forward. And now we're stopping again. And I don't know. I really, I, it, can, it can do fantastic on a gazillion stop signs as you've already seen. And that one screws it up. Just unbelievable how weird that is. All right, let's see. Uh, did my son come home yet? No, he's not home. Still at the gym. So, oh, wait, it's going to go to the neighbors, even though we got it. But well, there you go, in case you're wondering whether it'll park itself. It will actually park itself. Unfortunately, it parked itself in the wrong driveway this time. So, uh, what do you do? <laughs>
it's a work in progress for sure, guys. Work in progress for sure. So let's see. Let's see if we can give it a helping hand. Let's let's do this. I'm gonna press home again. This time I'm gonna go. All right. All right. Are you gonna do it this time? Let's see. Show people that you can actually park. All right. There you go. That was that was it. It actually did a better job on the other one. <laughs> so there you go, folks. Uh, it will try and park itself in the driveway, and um, you know we got a. It it took a little while before we got to the hairy parts of the drive, but uh, I will call those out when I post the video, as, so that way uh, people can see what kind of problems still exist. So. Um, it is what it is. Thanks for watching and going for a ride.